Okay, so uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Sekali lagi Assalamualaikum And very good afternoon to all of you So welcome to Dynamics uh, Diploma DMM2523 uh, This will be um, uh, a full online class Because I understand most of you are uh, at your hometown, at your home Okay um, <clears throat> Alright uh, so today uh, I will give a bit of introduction to the class, uh, to the chapters that we are going to to discuss uh, and then uh, we'll go a little bit uh, just to uh, revise what you have learned in physics okay the most of the uh, some of the contents that we are going to discuss in this class uh, you have already seen. Uh, in physics, um, whether during your SPM or physics uh, during your uh, first semester of diploma, uh, basic physics, uh, and also maybe some uh, theories, uh, the same theories that you have already uh, learned in statics as well. Okay, <clears throat> can you see the slides now? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So, um, before we start, I would like to introduce myself first. Uh, but before that, uh, this class will be conducted in English. Okay. Tapi kalau ada yang tak faham, you, if you don't understand my English, please tell me. You can uh, raise your hand in the Google Meet or you can also uh, speak to me. Uh, ataupun you can write in the chat box. Uh, so, if you want me to repeat Dalam bahasa Melayu, I can do that. But most of the time, I will be speaking in English and I hope you can understand my language. Is that okay? Okay, sir. Okay, okay good. <clears throat> okay, so uh, first thing first is about my contact details. So, uh, my name is uh, Muhammad Hasnun Arif bin Hassan. Uh, people call me Hasnun, so you can call me Hasnun as well. Uh, room is not significant uh, for this semester because you are not in UMP so whatever the communications that you would like to uh, to have with me uh, the conversation will be uh, done in the WhatsApp group so I hope that everybody has already joined the WhatsApp group ada yang belum join WhatsApp group if you know any of your friends uh, who's taking dynamic section M01 uh, with me, please uh, ask them to join uh, the WhatsApp group. If you need the link, I can provide the link again uh, in the WhatsApp group. Okay, uh, so this is my uh, phone number and also my email address. If you uh, really need to contact me regarding anything, you can... Uh, but I think most of the time, if you have any questions about uh, the topic that we are discussing in Dynamics, you can just write in the WhatsApp group and I will try my best to provide the answer. But if you need to uh, personally message me, you can also send a message to this number. Lah, okay? Or you can just type in your browser if you, don't, uh, if you do not want to save my number. You can go to your web browser, type hasnun.whatsapp.my then you will uh, you uh, the whatsapp application will open and you will uh, you you can send your message to me lah. okay <clears throat> uh, before we begin a little bit about my academic background uh, so uh, some of you may wonder where i studied before so i did my uh, degree uh, in Germany, uh, Mechanical Engineering in uh, University of Applied Sciences, Bingen. And then uh, I came back, I did my master's degree in University Malaya, Kuala Lumpur. And then uh, I did my PhD in UMP. Uh, I graduated in 2016. After that, I uh, started to serve uh, as a lecturer in UMP. So that is a little bit about myself. Okay, now let's talk about uh, the synopsis of the course. Okay, what you will learn. 
So the course introduce fundamental elements in the discipline of dynamics. Okay, uh, I I take it that all of you have already passed uh, statics because that is the prerequisite for you to uh, take dynamics. You must pass static first. Then only you can take dynamic. You tak boleh ambil dynamic if you have not passed uh, statics. So, uh, what is the different? Uh, as the name uh, says, static is static lah. Uh, the object is not moving. So you are calculating the force on uh, on a stationary object, object that is static, not moving. In dynamics, we will be discussing about motion. Okay, motion. And in a diploma level, uh, we will be uh, talking about motion of particles. So, particle ni, uh, later we will discuss more about particle. Particle is, uh, it's like a, a tiny dot, uh, 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 an atom, something like that. So, um, whatever problem that we will solve in this course, Dynamics, we will assume that it is a particle, a, a dot, a, a tiny dot. Uh, for example, we have a problem uh, with uh, to calculate, let's say, the velocity of a car. So we will assume that the car is a particle, a dot. Okay. Uh, the difference is that a dot uh, it can cannot rotate. So the dot cannot rotate. So the motion will always be. Uh, will always be a translation, translational motion. Later, we will discuss a lot about, uh, about this. Okay, uh, both kinematics and kinetics will be covered. Okay, apa itu kinematics? Apa itu kinetics? Okay, uh, this uh, is this explained here. Uh, kinematics is the characteristic of the motion. Okay, the principle of motion. Uh, position, velocity, acceleration. Ini kita panggil sebagai kinematics. Okay, to kinematics. Uh, tapi everything that is moving is in motion. There must be a force. Mesti ada satu daya yang tolak dia. Mesti ada force yang uh, is applied to the to the to the body to the particle, uh, which will cause the particle to move. So. That we will discuss in kinetics. Okay, so kinematics is the characteristic of the motion. Uh, position, velocity, acceleration. The kinetic is talking about the force. Okay, force yang menyebabkan motion itu berlaku. Okay, uh, so dalam chapter kinetics, uh, there will be three sub-chapters. Okay, force and acceleration. Okay, and then we will discuss work and energy. And the last chapter is impulse and momentum. So this is the synopsis of the course. We will discuss motion of particles. And we will be talking about kinematics, which is the character of the motion. And then we will discuss about kinetics, which is the force uh, yang menyebabkan motion. The force that uh, causes the motion. There are many forces. Other force, other... Uh, apa? Uh, that is moment, uh, force and everything. So, this uh, will be will fall under uh, kinetics. Okay. <clears throat> uh, in this uh, chapter, in sorry, in this uh, dynamics course, there are four chapters. Ataupun kita panggil sebagai uh, course outcomes. Okay. Course outcomes ni me melambangkan chapter lah. So, the first chapter ataupun the first course outcome is to solve dynamic quantities using kinematics of particle. Tadi saya dah explain uh, kinematic ialah uh, character of motion. So, uh, position, velocity, acceleration. So, we will be discussing about this in the first chapter, kinematics of particles. In chapter number 2, uh, we will solve dynamic quantities in the kinetics of particle using force and acceleration concept. Okay, now we move on to kinetics, uh, which is the uh, the force that cause the motion, and uh, ada beberapa method uh, in kinetics. The first uh, the first method or in chapter number two we will discuss about force and acceleration method or concept. 
chapter number three, still in kinetics, but now we are utilizing work and energy concept. Okay, ni concept, uh, different concept, tapi still related to the kinetics ataupun to the uh, force that causes the motion. Okay, in chapter number three, we will talk about work and energy. And in the last chapter, chapter four, we will discuss about kinetics, uh, still kinetics, and this time using impulse and momentum concept. So basically, if you look here, uh, kita ada satu chapter discussing about kinematics, uh, position, velocity, acceleration of particle. And then we have three chapters discussing about the force that cause the motion uh, and we have three concepts ataupun methods which is force and acceleration chapter number two work and energy chapter number three and impulse and momentum chapter number four okay do you have any question so far about uh, the the course okay the synopsis of the course and the chapters i have already uh, uh, briefly introduced to you any question No question. Can I proceed? Yes. Sir. Okay. Masih boleh dengar suara saya. Eh? Okay. If uh, at any time kalau uh, ada tiba-tiba you tak dengar suara ataupun you tak nampak uh, my camera ke apa, please uh, inform me so that I can fix uh, if there is any problem lah. Okay. So let's move on. <coughs> Now, uh, ini Penting. This is uh, the part that you need to concentrate and uh, I think all of the students would like to know. How are you going to be assessed in this course? Okay, ni ialah assessment. So, throughout the course, there will be 100% mark lah. Ini markah yang you akan dapat in the end. So, macam mana 100% ini dipecahkan, dibahagi-bahagikan mengikut chapter ataupun course outcome tadi. CO ni ialah Uh, cost outcome. So, mengikut cost outcome tadi, uh, macam mana assessment ini akan dibuat dalam uh, dalam kursus dynamics ini. Okay. So, kita ada uh, tiga jenis assessment. Yang pertama ada quiz, ada test dan ada final exam. Okay. Kesemua ini akan berlaku secara online, secara dalam talian. Okay. Uh, the first uh, assessment that you will be getting later maybe after 3 weeks ataupun 2 weeks ialah quiz number 1 okay quiz 1 uh, which will carry 6% 6% of the total 100 marks ini dan dia datang dari chapter number 1 CO1 so we will discuss uh, chapter 1 maybe half of the chapter 1 then I will give you quiz 1 6% And then there will be quiz number two. Maybe at the end of chapter one, there will be another quiz. Okay, quiz two, another six percent. Dia datang daripada chapter number one also, CO number one. And then we will go into chapter number two, C, uh, ataupun course outcome number two, CO two. And then there will be uh, maybe halfway of the chapter two, ataupun towards the end of chapter two, akan ada quiz three, another six percent. Okay. Uh, this comes from chapter number 2. Uh, pertengahan semester, maybe uh, minggu ke 7 atau minggu, minggu ke 8, we will have test 1. Okay, test 1 ni markah dia besar lah, 15%. So, you should uh, aim to score. You tengok lah, daripada chapter 1 and chapter 2 sahaja, ini quiz 1, 2, 3 dah total dia 18%. Test 1, 15%. So, dekat sini sahaja dah 33%. Uh, of the total mark Test 1 ni akan uh, datang daripada dua chapter Chapter 1 dan chapter 2 Ini pertengahan semester lah Half of the semester we will have uh, test 1 And then we will continue with chapter number 3 Towards the end of chapter 3 You will have another quiz Quiz number 4 6% lagi markah dia uh, Comes from chapter number 3 And then we will go into the last chapter Chapter 4 ada akan ada quiz 5. Okay, quiz 5 another 6% comes from uh, C, uh, chapter 4 ataupun CO number 4, cost outcome number 4. And then 
towards the end of the semester maybe week 14 minggu ke-14 lah minggu minggu terakhir uh, kuliah kita akan ada test 2 okey test number 2 carries another 15% then dia datang dari chapter 3 dan chapter 4 okey so total semua kat sini daripada sebelum kita sampai ke final exam that is already 60% of markah 60% markah dah ada dalam sepanjang semester throughout the semester and lastly we will have final examination which carry 40% of the mark okay dan soalan-soalannya akan datang daripada semua chapter chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4 will be covered in the final exam okay so total in total you will have 100% of marks lah okay ada soalan tentang assessment any question on the assessment Ada yang tak clear ke berkenaan assessment? Can you see my slide clearly in the Google Meet? Yes. Clear? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, sir. Yes. Saya kiranya yang final examination pun still uh, secara online. Betul, secara online. Because I understand that you will not be coming back to the university. Uh... uh for now, only the final year student will come back to the university. So, you are not uh, in your final year yet. Uh, so, the the exam will be conducted online. But uh, the method macam mana kita nak buat online tu, guna medium apa, later I will explain to you. Okay, any more question? Okay, kalau tak ada saya proceed dulu. If you have any question, just uh, apa ni boleh tanya throughout the the class today. No problem. Okay. Now, this is the class planning. Eh? So, I hope that I can um, uh, I can follow the plan lah. So, this is what I have planned uh, for the whole semester. So, week 1 is today, 1st March 2021. We will do some introduction. This is what we are doing now. And then selepas ini, I will uh, uh, straight away go into a little bit of what we are going to discuss, which is uh, the the in the first chapter, rectilinear kinematics, continuous motion. So you tengok yang color yellow ataupun uh, kuning kuning chocolate skin ni is uh, chapter number one. So we will discuss chapter one until week number five, separuh minggu kelima. Baru kita habis chapter 1. Eh? So, this is chapter 1. So, quiz 1 dan quiz 2 akan datang dalam tempoh ni lah. Quiz 1 dan quiz 2 datang dari chapter number 1. So, maybe uh, uh, 15 March ni, before we start with uh, the uh, projectile motion, maybe I will do a quiz. Quiz number 1. And then maybe week number 4 ni ke, uh, 24 March ni, mungkin kita akan buat lagi satu quiz number 2. Okay, so quiz saya belum decide bila nak buat tapi these are the chapters that we will discuss uh, in the uh, throughout the, the the semester lah. Uh, by the way, slides ni dan juga class planning ni saya sudah pun share dalam uh, Google Classroom. Nanti saya tunjuk you macam mana untuk uh, join Google Classroom kalau you belum uh, join lagi. Okay, and then uh, 19 ke 23 April, 19 to 23rd of April 2021. There will be one week of mid-semester break. Okay. So, you you will notice that kita akan belajar selama tujuh minggu, seven weeks of lecture and then semester break. So, there is, uh, uh, test one is not yet conducted during this time. Okay. Uh, 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 chapter number two uh, is not as long as chapter one. Chapter one ni memang panjang sikit lah. Dia banyak sub-chapter dalam dia. So, chapter 2 we will cover in uh, 2 weeks and half. 2 minggu dua minggu setengah kita akan habis chapter number 2. Okay? Minggu kelima uh, minggu kelima hari Rabu, uh, 31st March, kita akan masuk chapter 2 and then dia akan habis pada minggu ke-7. Just before semester break. And then you will go for semester break. When you come back from the semester break ataupun you tak come back pun memang you kat rumah kan? So, uh, after the semester break, we will do test 1. Test 1 ni kita saya plan untuk buat during class time. So, bukan kita tak nak buat waktu malam ataupun waktu luar waktu kelas. Uh, so, that 
there will be no possibility of clashing lah. So sebelum ni mungkin kalau kita buat waktu malam ada subjek lain nak buat juga test pada malam tersebut. Jadi akan ada clashing antara subjek dynamics dengan subjek lain for example. So uh, uh, for this uh, semester I am planning to do the test during class. So maksud dia pada 26 April ni we will do the 26 April is on Monday hari Isnin. So, we will do test one buat pada waktu macam ni lah. Pukul 2 sampai pukul 4. 2 hours. Okay. That will be in week number 8. Kemudian week 8, uh, hari Rabu, kita akan mula dengan chapter ketiga. Selepas test one, kita mula chapter 3. Okay, kita mula chapter 3 for about 3 weeks and a half lah. 3 weeks and a half, we will discuss chapter number 3. Okay. And then, uh, dalam masa ini akan ada quiz lah untuk chapter 3 which is quiz 4. So, quiz 4 maybe in week 10 ataupun week 11. Something like that. Okay. Uh, and please note that dekat sini saya ada tulis 12 Mei ni no class. Because 13 Mei tu hari raya. So, we are still not sure whether we can go back or we can travel across state. Boleh, boleh rentas negeri ataupun tak during hari raya. But... Uh, I hope that we can travel uh, during Hari Raya so I will not do the class on uh, 12 May. Okay, this is one day before Hari Raya. Hari Raya is on uh, Thursday, 13 May. 13th of May is Hari Raya Aidilfitri. Okay, uh, so this is in, uh, chapter 3. Kemudian kita akan masuk chapter 4. Chapter 4 pun akan ada satu hari yang jatuh pada hari cuti which is Hari Wesak. 26 Mei pun kita tak akan ada kelas. So basically chapter 4 ni kita akan cover in about 2 weeks lah. Week 12, week 13, week 14 yang pertama. Dan uh, satu hari ni cuti. So 2 minggu kita akan cuba habiskan chapter terakhir which is chapter 4. And then um, hari terakhir kuliah uh, which is week 14, uh, 9th of June, we will do test 2. Also during uh, class time. Okay, uh, from 2 to 4, uh, this is 9th June is on Wednesday lah, hari Rabu. So, we'll, I, I am planning to do test 2 pada hari Rabu, 9 June 2021, uh, jam 2 hingga 4 petang also. Okay, do you have any question regarding the class planning? I also share this with you in the Google Classroom. So, this is the first half of the semester. Separuh pertama semester, minggu satu hingga minggu ke tujuh. Kemudian ada satu minggu uh, mid-semester break. And then, kita akan sambung minggu ke-8 hingga minggu ke-14. Uh, kemudian, you will have one week of um, uh, apa tu? study 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 week. One week. And then, uh, followed by final exam. So, the final examination will be uh, dalam bulan 6 lah in June. Okay. Any question? Okay, kalau tak ada soalan, I will proceed. Okay, this will be our main uh, reference book. Okay. Uh, if you have the money to buy, you can buy. Uh, but, it is not necessary that you buy. Tak semestinya you perlu beli. You don't have to buy if you don't want to. Um, if you follow uh, closely what we are discussing in the class. Kalau you follow apa yang kita discuss dalam class. You follow the tutorial session and everything. I think uh, that will be enough for you to 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 be able to understand and answer uh, the question lah in this uh, dynamics course. But... Uh, this is the book that we will use, okay? Uh, Engineering Mechanics, Dynamics, uh, written by Russell C. Hibbler. Dan dalam ni ada chapter 12 hingga 21, if I'm not mistaken. Tapi, we are not going to cover all the chapters. Uh, for Dynamics Diploma, we, we will only cover chapter 12, 13, 14, 15. So, ini correspond to chapter yang saya tunjuk tadi lah. We have four chapters altogether. So, uh, dia, dia directly tally with the chapter in the book lah. Okay. Okay. Um, any question so far? This is just uh, some uh, overview of the course lah. 
Kalau ada question, please uh, you can ask or you can write in the chat box and I will try to answer. Sir. Yes. Uh, untuk final exam dengan test, open book text ke? Uh, good question. Saya belum decide. Tapi later we will uh, discuss. Lah. Tapi you have to understand lah. Kalau dia uh, open book, then soalan dia kena jadi lain sikit lah. Tapi I understand also, it will be difficult uh, untuk tak buat open book because saya tak boleh control you dekat rumah macam mana. So, tak apa ya. Uh, berkenaan test dan final exam, later we will I will inform you lah. Uh, throughout the class nanti kita akan discuss how are we going to do the test and uh, final exam. Uh, and also, uh, the session yang kita tengah buat sekarang ni, I am recording uh, what I am presenting to you ni. Saya tengah record. Dan later, uh, after every class, I will upload the recording maybe in YouTube and then I will share in the Google Classroom. So, you can always go back uh, kepada apa yang kita bincang dalam kelas kalau you miss anything, any and whatever, uh, any points ataupun any uh, later kalau kita ada buat calculation tutorial, if you miss Uh, you nak refer semula you have you will have the video okay i will share the video in the google classroom lah okay next is the student list ini uh, the latest student list that i generated just now just before the class so we have 26 people uh, registered uh, in this section so i want you to check whether your name is here and make sure your name all of you uh, your name is here if not Uh, yeah, then you have to do something like you have to contact the uh, admin at the faculty and check why your name is not in the list. Okay, according to the system, there are 26 students registered uh, in this course. Okay, dynamic section M01. Alright. Okay, kalau tak ada soalan, uh, another thing is that I want you to join the Google Classroom. Okay, ini Google Classroom that I have already created. In fact, uh, saya dah pun invite you based on the email address that you, that I have in the system. Saya tak pasti email address dalam system tu adakah yang latest ataupun tak. Uh, tapi some of you may have already uh, received the invitation lah to the Google Classroom. So, um, you uh, can... Uh, go in the Google Classroom and you can see in the classwork ni, I have already uh, created week 1, Introduction and Rectilinear Kinematics. Dalam ni, you will find a course overview ni. If you click, you will see the slides. Okay, ini slide yang saya present tadi. Uh, everything that I have explained. Saya ada upload kat sini. You can You can download or you can view using your phone. Dan juga ada lecture planning tadi eh, yang saya explain pada you uh, for the whole semester. So, I hope that we can follow the lecture planning lah. Tapi, some of the time maybe tiba-tiba saya ada meeting ke pada hari tersebut yang clash dengan kelas. So, we will see how uh, to, 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 apa ni, if we need to do some replacement class lah. Tapi, as for now, kita akan cuba untuk stick with the lecture planning yang saya dah buat ni. <coughs> Okay, so please join the Google Classroom. Uh, dia punya class code ialah yang ni. Okay, so please uh, salin kalau you belum, belum join. Tapi, saya dah pun invite all of you uh, using the email in the system tu lah yang you ada, yang you register dalam system. If the email is correct, then you should have already received the invitation lah. So, please uh, join. Okay, ini code dia. DQY2OUI. Uh, DQY2OUI. Okay, and if I check in the people list ni, sekarang ni dah ada 20 students yang uh, yang uh, accept ataupun enroll the in, uh, accept the invitation lah. Ada beberapa lagi yang saya telah pun invite tapi mungkin diorang belum join lagi. Okay, so okay, sekarang dah ada 22. Okay, so please join now lah if you, if you uh, uh, in front of your uh, laptop, you can uh, apa ni, open... Google Classroom and terus join. Uh, sebenarnya saya pada awalnya nak guna kalam tapi 
uh, kalam ni sometimes dia crash uh, and ada some problem dan sebagainya so saya tak nak benda tu berlaku later on so I have decided that we will use Google Classroom lah throughout the the semester uh, any of you have any problem with Google Classroom tak boleh masuk ke tak ada account Google ke ada tak <coughs> ada tak anyone have problem with Google Classroom tak ada tak ada eh? semua ok eh? alright Okay, um, the attendance for the class, I will uh, always capture the uh, apa ni, attendance in the Google Classroom lah. So, macam just now saya dah capture siapa yang ada dalam Google Classroom. So, I consider that as the attendance lah uh, for this class. So, you don't have to fill in anything. Uh, pertengahan Dalam pertengahan kelas macam tu, saya akan terus uh, capture screen. Uh, from Google Classroom and I consider that as the attendance Okay, now if there is no more question So, uh, saya akan continue with the the first content that I would like to share Okay, can you see the slides? Introduction to Dynamics Yes, okay, alright. So, um, let's go through uh, a little bit about what we are going to cover in this uh, class. Okay, uh, this is the lesson outcomes uh, for today's class. So, at the end of this this lesson, you should get an overview of the, the course, what we are going to cover. Uh, engineering Mechanics, Dynamics. So, basically, under Engineering Mechanics ni ada dua lah, ada dua ada dua cabang. So, one is static which you have already learned. The other one is dynamic. So, that is what we are going to cover. And then, uh, you also need to understand the sub-discipline ataupun di bawah dynamics tu nanti ada lagi dua cabang which is kinematics. Tadi saya dah explain. It is the character of motion and kinetics which is the force uh, causing the motion. So, uh, everything that is in motion, benda yang bergerak mesti ada force yang yang tolak dia, yang being applied to it. And then, uh, the last uh, is to understand the structure of the course and uh, I forgot to put, there is another, uh, uh, few, uh, there is one more uh, lesson outcomes for today which is, um, uh, you will understand a little bit about rectilinear kinematics. Okay. Okay. Uh, engineering mechanics. Basically, uh, engineering mechanics is the study on how rigid bodies react to the force acting on them. So, ada rigid body means that uh, throughout the motion, apabila satu uh, objek tersebut bergerak dari dari point pertama sehingga point yang kedua, uh, dia tidak akan berlaku deformation kepada body, bod, uh, kepada badan, kepada jasad dia. So, objek tersebut tidak akan mengecil atau membesar, dia akan remain pada size yang sama. Itu maksud dia rigid body. So, it is rigid lah. Rigid tu dia 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 keras lah dia tidak berubah bentuk. Okay dalam bahasa Melayu dia tidak berubah bentuk. So dia dalam pergerakan dia dalam motion dia from one point to another point uh, the shape will not change. That is rigid body because there is another uh, branch of uh, mechanics which is called deformable body. So that is not going to cover in undergraduate level. Yang tu kalau you pergi kepada level Uh, master for example maybe you will learn a deformable body okay so under engineering mechanics there are two branches statics and dynamics so in statics you will learn about uh, bodies uh, you have already learned about bodies in equilibrium where you use the newton first law of motion which is uh, the total force equals to zero Okay, ini yang you belajar sebelum ni. Total force on the body equal to zero in equilibrium lah maksud dia. Uh, satu uh, Newton first law ni kata uh, satu body tidak akan bergerak. Uh, sa sorry, satu body akan uh, remain with its uh, current state of motion. Kalau dia static, dia akan remain static. 
Kalau dia tengah bergerak, dia akan remain bergerak pada kelajuan yang sama uh, Sekiranya tiada uh, external force Ataupun sekiranya tiada daya dari luar yang bertindak kepada objek tersebut Kepada body tersebut That is Newton first law of motion okay? dia, dia kekal berada dalam uh, dalam state dia, dalam keadaan dia So that is what we call as equilibrium Dalam dynamic Uh, this is the study of motion. So, dalam dynamic, kita akan berbincang tentang uh, objek yang ataupun body yang bergerak. Dyna dia dia apa uh, opposite kepada static tadi lah. Static dia equilibrium. Dia tidak bergerak ataupun dia sedang bergerak dalam hal dalam speed yang sama je. Dia tidak berubah uh, dari segi velocity apa dan sebagainya. Kerana tiada external force yang bertindak ke atas dia. There is no external force acting on the body that is why it remains in equilibrium. Itu untuk static. Untuk dynamic akan ada perubahan. So we are we will discuss in two uh, perspective ataupun sub chapter kinematics tadi, geometric aspect of motion S ialah uh, displacement, V ialah uh, velocity, A ialah acceleration dan T ialah time, masa. So these are Uh, the parameters involved during the motion dalam apabila berlaku pergerakan motion so uh, akan ada displacement akan ada perubahan position of the of the body akan ada perubahan dari segi velocity speed dia akan berubah uh, kalau speed dia berubah mengikut masa akan ada acceleration akan ada pecutan dan juga masa masa akan berubahlah daripada time equals to zero sehingga time equals to Uh, berapa second for example uh, That is kinematics And then kinetics is how the force uh, How forces causing the motion Macam mana force tu Yang di apply kepada body Akan menyebabkan body itu bergerak <coughs> So in contrast to uh, statics In dynamics we are going to use a lot uh, Newton's second law of motion Newton's second law of motion mengatakan F equals to mass Uh, mass of the object multiply with the acceleration F equals to MA okay. ini Newton second law of motion ok, dalam dynamics pula akan ada dua lagi cabang which is particle dynamics and rigid body dynamics so rigid body dynamics ini tidak kita tidak akan cover we are not going to cover in this class because rigid body dynamics is uh, covered in degree level okay. untuk diploma we are going to cover particle dynamics only okay. so dalam particle dynamics ni macam saya explain tadi ada 4 chapter uh, that we are going to discuss throughout the semester chapter 1 ialah particle kinematics and then akan ada particle kinetics which is divided into 3 chapters okay. force and acceleration chapter 2 work and energy chapter 3 And the last one is Impulse and Momentum Chapter 4. Okay, that is a little bit about the cost structure lah. Okay, now let's go to what we are going to discuss a little bit today. Now, Rectilinear Kinematics. Ini the first uh, subtopic yang kita akan discuss. Apa maksud Rectilinear? Okay, Rectilinear ni maksud dia ialah Straight Line Path. Maksudnya, Uh, objek tu akan bergerak ataupun partikel tu bergerak pada straight line so itu kita panggil sebagai rectilinear dan apabila kita sebut uh, rectilinear kinematics dia akan melibatkan position of the particle velocity of the particle and also the acceleration of the particle okay kinematics tu tadilah yang kita bagi tahu dia sebagai the character of the Uh, the characteristic of the motion. So, ada position, velocity and uh, acceleration. Okay. Now, let's go to position first. Apa maksud dengan position? Position ni ialah uh, dia dia single axis coordinate. Okay, single axis coordinate ni maksudnya kalau dekat sini kita tengok position partikel biru ini ialah pada x axis sahaja. Origin pada O. O is the origin. And position is a vector. Kenapa dia vector? Siapa ingat apa maksud vector? Apa beza vector dengan skala? Siapa ingat? Ada orang boleh bagi tahu? Anyone? 
vektor dengan skala apa apa beza dia arah arah betul Vek, uh, kalau skala dia hanya ada magnitude sahaja dia tak ada direction dia tak ada arah tapi vektor kita ada direction dan sorry kita ada magnitude dan direction so dalam kes ini uh, magnitude dia magnitude dia ialah berapa jarak dia lah daripada o ke position ini so distance from o to p is the magnitude of uh, s direction pula dia bergantung kepada s tu berada di sebelah kanan uh, origin atau di sebelah kiri origin so kalau dia berada di sebelah sebab kita ambil uh, x axis ni kalau you boleh imagine satu x axis ke kanan sebagai positif so kita akan ambil uh, positif position ialah berada ataupun uh, uh, partikel ini berada di sebelah kanan uh, O kalau partikel ini berada di sebelah kiri O dia akan jadi negatif so itu position seterusnya ialah displacement ok <coughs> uh, make sure you can uh, you can differentiate eh? make sure awak boleh bezakan di antara position tadi dengan displacement so ini position pertama partikel tadi kemudian partikel ni bergerak ke position kedua ok so apa displacement dia Displacement ni kalau bahasa Melayu dipanggil sesaran So sesaran dia ialah delta S ni Perubahan position Change of position So position kedua dia sampai kat sini Sampai kat sini S prime kita tulis Position pertama S Jadi displacement dia ialah S prime tolak S So apa yang berada di sini Perubahan dia Perubahan Position, the change of position is the displacement. Sama juga, displacement is a vector quantity. Bermaksud, dia ada magnitude dan dia ada uh, direction, dia ada arah. So, apabila dia vector quantity, dia akan ada positif atau negatif lah. So, kalau dia positif, kalau delta S tadi, displacement positif means that the final position of the particle is to the right. Maksudnya, Uh, posisi pertama dekat sini Posisi kedua pergi ke sebelah kanan okay, Dia akan jadi uh, Positif Displacement Tapi kalau Posisi pertama kat sini Posisi kedua dia pergi ke kiri Jadi sekarang ni uh, S prime kita lagi kecil daripada S So bila you tolak You akan dapat delta S sebagai negatif So which means that if Delta S is negative The particle's final position is To the left to the left of the uh, of the uh, of the first position. Okey, itu uh, sedikit tentang displacement. So kita dah kita dah uh, tengok tadi position dan displacement. Sekarang kita pergi kepada velocity. Okey, velocity ni pula ada average velocity dan instantaneous velocity. Apa benda ni? Okey, mari kita tengok. If the particle move through a displacement delta s during time interval. Okey, maksud dia pada ketika partikel ni berada di posisi ini, katalah time pada masa ini ialah t equals to 2. Seterusnya dia bergerak ke position yang kedua. t equals to 4 katakan. Dalam masa t equals to 2 hingga t equals to 4, partikel ni sampai ke sini. So dia dah berlaku perubahan posisi, perubahan position. So dia ada delta S, displacement. Dan dia berlaku juga perubahan masa. Dekat sini T sama dengan 2 Dekat sini T sama dengan 4 So ada delta T pula kat situ Change of time Jadi kita akan dapat Apa yang dipanggil sebagai Average velocity uh, Delta S Displacement tadi Bahagi dengan delta T uh, Perubahan masa Kita dapat average velocity Okay <coughs> Kalau katakan Tadi kita buat T equal to 2 Sini T equals to 4 katakan tapi sekarang ni kita nak tengok sangat kecil T equals to 2 Lepas tu next ialah T equals to 2 perpuluhan 0,001 katakan So delta T tu sangat kecil Perubahan T tu sangat kecil Almost menghampiri 0 So ini yang dipanggil sebagai instantaneous velocity Maksud dia velocity ni berubah Tapi kita nak tahu velocity dia semasa pada masa itu Instant Sebab tu kita panggil dia instant Segera pada masa tersebut Ha, kita panggil dia instantaneous velocity. So, ada dua beza lah. Average velocity ni yang 
daripada t equals to berapa sehingga t equals to berapa jarak dia jauh okey ja, jauh masa pun dia ambil panjang so dibahagikan you dapat average so dia dah bergerak jauh lah dia bergerak jauh dalam masa yang lama uh, kita bahagikan uh, delta s bahagi delta t kita dapat average velocity tapi kalau kita nak tahu velocity pada masa tertentu dia panggil instantaneous velocity so yang ni apabila delta t tu ialah menghampiri kosong maksudnya sangat rapat antara posisi pertama dan posisi kedua ok so uh, kita dapat instantaneous velocity sebagai ds over dt basically ia, dia ialah uh, uh, differentiation lah differentiate um, apa tu uh, uh, differentiate of the displacement bahagi differentiate of time ok uh, masih lagi uh, dia ialah uh, vector quantity positive if the particle is moving to the right dan uh, negative if the particle is moving to the left ok so ini velocity average dan instantaneous ada apa-apa soalan ok saya go through sahaja slide ni nanti kalau you ada soalan uh, just bagi tahu. selepas ni kita akan uh, cuba buat uh, satu tutorial sikit lah sama-sama ok Sekarang ada pula average speed dan average velocity. Tadi kita tengok average velocity dan instantaneous velocity. Sekarang ni average speed. Uh, average speed ni ialah uh, total distance travel divided by uh, masa. So katalah sekarang ni uh, particle P ni uh, daripada sini ya. Eh, ni ini titik pertama dia. Dia pergi ke depan lepas tu dia patah balik belakang sampai ke sini. Okey. Uh, displacement dia ialah ke sini je dia tak kira yang dia pergi depan ni sebab dia perjalanan dia dia pergi depan dia patah balik belakang uh, tapi yang delta S ni delta S bahagi delta T ni ialah kita panggil sebagai oh dia tak keluar ni delta T eh. so saya minta maaf eh. ni slide ni ada problem sikit ini delta T so uh, average Tadi kita dah bagi tahu average velocity ialah delta S bahagi delta T. Tapi kalau kita kira total S, maksudnya total S ni berapa dia pergi ke depan, dia patah balik semua, kita akan dapat total displacement. Bahagi dengan delta T, change of time, kita akan dapat average speed. Kalau yang tadi ialah delta S sahaja. So dia tak kira dah dia pergi ke depan, dia patah balik belakang, dia tak kira. Dia hanya ambil delta S ni kat sini je. Perubahan tempat je antara P pertama dan P kedua. Tapi sebenarnya P pertama, P ni daripada pertama dia dah pergi ke depan sikit, dia patah balik ke sini. So ini kalau kita kira yang ni dia jadi average velocity. Tapi kalau kita kira ke semua, um, ke semua uh, displacement dia tadi total displacement bahagi dengan delta t kita dapat average speed okey okey dan yang terakhir ialah acceleration okey basically hari ini saya nak sekadar nak recap saja this you have already learned all this uh, sekarang ialah acceleration so average acceleration sama macam tadi tadi kalau uh, velocity tadi average velocity ialah perubahan displacement change of displacement divided by change of time sekarang ni acceleration is change of velocity perubahan velocity pula bahagi dengan perubahan masa kita dapat average acceleration ok maksud dia daripada particle itu berada pada titik yang pertama ni velocity dia sekian-sekian uh, katalah V dia 10 meter per second dan pada keadaan yang kedua pada tempat ni velocity dia dah naik jadi 12 meter per second so kita ada perubahan velocity ha, itu yang kita delta V kat sini ni ni maksud dia perubahan velocity bahagi dengan perubahan masa pula so daripada sini pergi ke sini ha, masa diambil berapa <coughs> katalah uh, apa ni ni uh, dekat sini masa T equals to 2 tadi T, 2, T sama dengan 2 saat Dekat sini T sama dengan 4 saat. So delta T ialah 2 seconds. Dan perubahan velocity tadi ialah sini V 10, sini V ialah 12 meter per second. So 2 bahagi dengan uh, uh, 12 tolak 10 dapat 2 delta V. Bahagi dengan 4 tolak dengan 2 dapat 2 delta T. So average uh, acceleration ialah 1 
meter per second square. Okay, tu ialah average acceleration. Um, okay, delta V represents difference in the velocity during the time interval. Okay, samalah macam tadi lah. Uh, v prime ataupun V yang kedua tolak dengan V yang pertama. So, that is uh, delta V. Instantaneous acceleration tadi sama macam instantaneous velocity. Apabila kita ambil uh, masa tu yang sangat dekat. So, uh, yang menyebabkan delta T tu approaching zero. Delta T menghampiri zero. Jadi, delta T bawah ni menghampiri zero. So, kita dapat uh, A is equal to dV dt. So, this is another uh, differential equation lah. A equals to dV dt. Dan kalau kita tengok yang tadi, V ni ds dt. Okay, so bila A dv dt, kita gantikan V dalam ni dengan ds dt. So dia akan jadi d dua kali kat sini. D ds over dt dt. So that's why dia akan jadi d2s over dt square. Okay, ni kalau kita kalau kita gantikan V ni dengan dengan ini, dengan ds dt. Okay, ganti dalam ni. So kita dapat d2s over dt square. Okay. Last kali kita boleh susun equation-equation yang kita dapat tadi ni. Uh, tadi kita ada V sama dengan DS bahagi DT. So, sekarang ni bawa naik DT ke sini. V turun bawah. Lepas tu, A pula sama dengan DV DT. So, A ni pula bawa turun bawah. T bawa pergi sini. So, kita buat sedikit penyusunan semula ni. Rearrange of the equation. And we will get... A ds equal to V dv. So basically, this uh, the important kinematics equation yang you perlu tahu. <coughs> In fact, saya harap you dapat ingatlah benda ni. Ini basic je untuk kinematics. Uh, banyak nanti formula-formula uh, yang akan diterbitkan ataupun derive daripada daripada equation-equation ni. So V equals to ds dt. A equal to dv dt, ads equal to v dv. So, ini three equations ni yang sangat penting. I hope you can uh, remember. Dan tadi saya terlupa untuk explain one more thing. Uh, kalau acceleration ini ialah um, uh, velocity tu bertambah. Maksudnya, velocity pada posisi pertama 10 katakan. Velocity posisi kedua 20. Maknanya, meningkat. Velocity tu meningkat. So, dia akan jadi acceleration. Dia, uh, objek tersebut memecut. Uh, accelerate. Tapi kalau dia berkurang, katalah uh, uh, V yang pertama 10. V kedua turun jadi 5. Maknanya uh, dia macam uh, semakin perlahan. So, dia panggil sebagai deceleration. Tu tadi accelerate, memecut. Decelerate ni, uh, uh, pecutan dia berkurang lah. Okay, when particle is slowing down, its speed is decreasing. Maksud dia, V prime ni lagi kecil daripada V. So, akan jadi negatif lah. Delta V ni akan jadi negatif. V prime kecil tolak V besar jadi negatif. <coughs> so, it will act to the left. Maksudnya, acceleration ni bukan lagi arah dia ke kanan. Arah dia jadi sekarang ke kiri. Arah dia ke kiri, ke kiri in the opposite Uh, of V V punya arah ke kanan Tapi A punya arah ke kiri Disebabkan V prime ni lagi kecil Nampak uh, uh, Arrow V ni lagi panjang Daripada arrow V prime So dia lagi kecil Menyebabkan dia berlaku decelerating Okay uh, Pecutan tu berkurang Tapi kalau Velocity constant Maksud dia V yang pertama 10 V yang kedua pun 10 So, delta V akan jadi 10 tolak 10. Betul tak? Eh? 10 tolak 10 jadi kosong. So, bila kosong bermaksud acceleration zero lah. Tak ada pecutan. So, kalau velocity constant, tiada pecutan. Kalau velocity kedua lebih laju daripada velocity pertama, dia jadi accelerating, memecut. Kalau velocity kedua lebih kecil daripada velocity pertama, dia jadi decelerating, deceleration. Dia slow down berkurang, pecutan dia berkurang tapi kalau velocity pertama dan velocity kedua sama maksud dia constant V1 10, V2 pun 10 so tolak dua tu delta V kita ialah kosong so therefore 
acceleration is equal to zero. Okay. Alright. So ada apa-apa soalan sebelum kita uh, sebelum kita cuba buat tutorial question? Ada apa-apa soalan? Tak ada soalan sih. Tak ada. Eh? Okay, kalau tak ada soalan, let's try to do a few tutorial question. You boleh nampak uh, saya punya soalan ni? Okay. So, kita baca dulu. The car on the left in the photo moves in a straight line. Okay. Uh, for a short time, its velocity is defined by V equals to 0.6 T square plus T meter per second. So, kita ada information di sini. Ini dia punya uh, uh, velocity. Determine its position. So, apa yang dia nak ialah determine position and acceleration when T equals to 3 seconds. Lepas tu dia bagi pula clue pada kita sikit. Apabila T equal to 0, S equals to 0. Maksudnya, pada uh, time equals to 0, position dia pada kosong lah. Maksudnya, dia bergerak daripada origin. Bergerak uh, ke, ke depan. Okay. So, apa information yang kita ada di sini? Kita diberi information V is equal to 0.6 T square. If you have a paper with you, please do it together with me eh. Ini kita consider sebagai kita punya tutorial session lah. So, I will be doing this regularly. So, saya akan explain teori sikit and then kita akan buat soalan bersama. Uh, and I I am recording this session. So, later saya akan upload dalam uh, Google Classroom so that you can refer lah uh, semula uh, tutorial dan juga uh, lecture tadi uh, uh, pada pada after the class lah. So, I will upload later. <coughs> okay. So, we have the information V equals to 0.6 T square plus T. So, daripada tadi, tiga equation yang tadi saya beritahu apa tadi? V equals to dS over dt kan? V equals to dS over dt. This is information that we have. So, so kita ambil yang tu. V is equal to dS over dt is equal to 0.6 T square plus T. Okay. Sebab apa sekarang ni? Kita nak tahu position. This is what we want to know. Position ni apa? Dalam variable ni, position ni mana satu? V ke S ke T position? S. S, correct. So, S is the position. So, sekarang ni, what we want to find out is apa, apa S ni? What is the value of S? Apabila T equals to 3 seconds. Okay. So, sekarang ni, apa yang kita buat ialah, kita akan bawa DT ni ke sini. Okay, kita bawa DT ke sana. So, saya akan tulis di sini. Kita akan jadi DS is equal to, ni sedikit uh, kita akan bermain dengan uh, differentiation lah. Differentiation dan integration. So, you kena refresh sikit memory calculus dan sebagainya untuk jawab soalan yang berkaitan macam ni lah. Okay, so ds tadi kita dah bawa dt ke sana. So, dia akan jadi 0.6 t square plus t dt. Okay. Ni dalam bracket lah. Alright. So, macam mana nak solve ni? Kita kena integrate lah. Kita integrate sini. Dan kita integrate sini. So, bila kita integrate, kita akan buang lah dia punya d ni. Okay. Remember, integrate integration uh, of differentiation dia akan dia akan hilangkan differentiation tu lah so apa yang tinggal ialah um, <coughs> uh, apa yang tinggal ialah s s is equal to ok macam mana kita integrate ni 0.6 t square ada yang ingat tak macam mana nak integrate 0.6 T uh, power of 3 over 3. Alright. Betul. So, dia akan jadi 0.6 T to the power of 3 divided by 3. 
Yang ni T ni plus T square. Bahagi? Ada bahagi tak? Uh, divided by 2. Uh, so, plus T square bahagi dengan 2. Okay. So, kita susun balik lah. Yang ni dia boleh jadi S is equal to 0.6 bahagi 0.3. Dia akan jadi 0.2 0.2 T to the power of 3 plus uh, setengah ni 0.5 lah. 0.5 T square. Okay. So, ini yang kita dapat. <coughs> so, sekarang ni soalan tanya apabila T ialah 3 saat. So, apabila T, when T is 3 seconds. When T is equal to 3 seconds, berapa, S equal to berapa? Ha, ini soalan dia. Jadi, kita tinggal gantikanlah dalam ni, kita gantikan dengan 3 seconds. Yang ni pun kita gantikan dengan 3 seconds. So, kita akan dapat S is equal to 0.2 times 3 to the power of 3 plus 0.5 times 3 to the power of 2. Okay. Sekarang, ambil calculator you dan calculate. Berapa kita dapat? Berapa displacement dia selepas 3 saat? <coughs> Berapa kita dapat? 9.9. Correct. 9.9 meter. Ingat, eh? sentiasa tulis uh, dia punya unit. Okay. Maknanya, dalam kes ni, kita uh, menganggapkan kereta ni macam satu titik. Nampak? Saya lukis titik dekat kereta ni. Okay, kita anggap dia sebagai satu titik. So, sebab tu kita uh, kita calculate sebagai partikel. So, kita anggap titik ni yang bergerak ke sini. Ha, titik ni. Ini yang menunjukkan dia punya velocity dan juga acceleration. So, kereta tu sendiri walaupun dia ialah sebuah kereta tapi dalam Calculation ini kita anggap dia sebagai satu titik. Okay. <coughs> Position dah selesai. Sekarang kita nak tahu apa acceleration dia pula. Okay. Acceleration. Macam mana kita nak dapat acceleration? Okay. Jom kita tengok balik equation tadi. Acceleration ni A kan? A ialah dv. <coughs> A ialah dv dt. So macam mana kita nak dapat Uh, A equals to uh, Macam mana kita nak dapat acceleration Is A equals to dv dt Ok sekarang ni kita buat A is dv dt V kita apa sekarang ni <coughs> V kita ialah Dah diberi ni 0.6 T square plus T So basically apa kita nak kena buat Ialah kita kena differentiate pula D over dt V kita ialah 0.6 T square plus T. Okay. Ha, sekarang ingat tak macam mana nak differentiate ni? 0.6 T square. Jadi apa bila kita differentiate? 1.2 T. Correct. 1.2 T. Bila kita differentiate T jadi? 1. Jadi 1. Okay. Good. So, jadi satu. So, ni kita punya A. Okay, ni kita punya A. Mari saya highlight sikit. Ni kita punya A. So, kita dah dapat equation. A ialah 1.2T plus 1. Okay, so sekarang dia nak tahu juga pada T equals to 3 seconds. So, when when T equals to 3 seconds, kita akan dapat A is equal to 1.2 times 3 plus 1 ok so kita akan dapat what is the answer 4.6 correct 4.6 meter per second square ingat ya unit semua kena ingat uh, untuk acceleration is meter per second square untuk displacement is meter untuk velocity meter per second ok ada apa-apa soalan Ada apa-apa soalan untuk tutorial ni? Tak ada. Tak ada. Boleh kita buat lagi satu? Boleh sebut. Okay, let's do Boleh. one more. Let's do one more before kita tamatkan kelas pada hari ni lah. So, saya tak plan untuk buat kelas sampai pukul 4. 
So kalau kita boleh balik habis, habis awal uh, lagi bagus lah. Okay. So let's read the question now. Starting from rest. Okay. Maksud dia dia start tu pada pada uh, apa? T equal to zero, V equals to zero lah. Starting from rest. Maknanya dia tak bergerak. Pada awal-awal awal-awal permulaan tu dia tidak bergerak. A particle moving in straight line. Okay. Has an acceleration. Okay. Sekarang dia bagi acceleration pula. Has an acceleration of 2T minus 6 meter per second square. Where T is in seconds. What is the particle's velocity? Okay, dia nak cari apa? Dia nak cari velocity. Apabila t equals to 6. Lepas tu dia nak tanya pula position pula. When t equals to 11. Okay, so basically apa dia nak ialah velocity. Dekat sini dia nak position s. Okay. Alright. <coughs> so, kita tengok apa dia bagi. Dia bagi ialah acceleration. A is equal to 2T minus 6. Okay. Macam mana nak dapat velocity? Ingat lagi, dia punya hubung kait dia, relationship dia. Ha. Ada acceleration, nak dapat velocity. Macam mana? DVDT. Integrate. DVDT, okay. Kita ada DVDT, okay. So, kita tahu A ialah dv over dt. Okey, so sekarang ni kita boleh bawa dt ni ke sini. So kita akan dapat uh, dv is equal to 2t minus 6 dt. Okey. And then kita integrate dekat sini dan integrate dekat sini. Integrate Integrate dua-dua. Dua-dua belah. Kita tak boleh integrate sebelah je. Kita kena integrate kedua-dua belah. Okay. Bila kita integrate dv, kita dapat v. Bila kita integrate dt, kita akan hilang lah uh, uh, dt tadi. Okay. So, apa kita dapat daripada sini ialah v is equal to, okay, 2t. Integrate. Jadi apa? T square. Okay, dia dapat 2t square over 2 kan? 2t square bahagi 2 kan? So, dia tinggal t square sahaja. Dan integrate 6 kita akan dapat? 6t. 6t, correct. Okay, 6t. Now, dia tanya, when t is 6 second. So, when t, when t equal to 6 seconds, then v is equal to 6 square minus 6 times 6. Okey, jadi berapa V kita ni? 6 square 64 tolak 6 times 6 36. Jadi 0. 0. 0. Yes, oh betul 0. Sorry, 6 square 64 6. So dia akan jadi 0. So maksud dia tak ada velocity pada t Times t equals to 6 second. Yes, betul. Saya dah double check. Jawapan dia pun 0. Okay. So, this is correct. 0. Uh, unit is meter per second for velocity. Okay, sekarang dia nak tahu position. Maksud dia, dia berhenti lah. So, the particle tu, dia dia move daripada satu position. Bergerak sampai uh, 6 second tadi, dia berhenti. Because velocity equals to zero. So, itu dia punya gambaran per, pergerakan dia lah, motion dia. Okay, sekarang kita nak tahu position S pula. <coughs> okay. S, kita dah ada V. Tadi kita dah ada, um, kita dah ada V di sini. V is equal to 6, oh, sorry. Bukan yang ni, yang ni. V is equal to T square minus 6T. So, daripada ini, Macam mana untuk kita dapatkan Macam mana kita nak dapatkan uh, T uh, Sorry, macam mana kita nak dapatkan S Okay, kita Kita ada V equals to DS DT Okay, remember V equals to DS DT Alright, so dekat sini um, DS over DT DS over DT Is equal to 
t square minus 6t ok basically kita gantikan v tu dengan ds dt so kita bawa dt ni sama method macam tadi ke kanan so kita akan ada uh, ds is equal to t square minus 6t dt then kita integrate kedua-dua belah ok so kita akan dapat s is equal to integrate t square kita akan dapat t to the power of 3 divided by 3 ok and then minus 6t to the power of 2 divided by 2 alright <coughs> ok then dia tanya when t equals to 11 second so when when t equals to 11 seconds berapa value s s ialah 11 to the power of 3 divided by 3 minus 6 times 11 to the power of 2 divided by 2 ok berapa s kita dapat ni ada yang dah kira berapa value s yang kita dapat Sebelas kuasa tiga bahagi tiga tolak enam kali sebelas kuasa dua bahagi dua. Okey. Chia Zikuan kata 80.67. Yes, exactly. So, we have 80.67 meter. So, this is the position. So, ini uh, uh, apa? position of the uh, particle selepas T equals to 11 seconds. Okey. So, ada apa-apa soalan? Do you have any question on the topic that we have covered today? No question. No question? Okay, so I hope everything is clear. So, uh, if there is no more question, uh, this will be the end of the class untuk hari ini. Uh, seperti yang saya bagi tahu tadi, uh, I have been recording this session. Nanti saya akan uploadkan recording ini dalam uh, Google Classroom so that you can refer later, uh, maybe tonight or tomorrow. And uh, on Wednesday sekali lagi kita akan ada kelas jam 2 petang juga macam macam hari ini. Uh, we will continue with um, with uh, rectilinear motion lagi, uh, continuous motion. Uh, and now we uh, uh, on Wednesday we will discuss uh, the case when acceleration is constant. Okay, so seperti yang saya buat hari ni we will uh, we will discuss the theory first a little bit and then kita akan uh, buat tutorial session where I will solve the problem together with you. Okay, so kalau tak ada apa apa soalan uh, ada ada apa apa soalan? No question? No, sir. Alright. Okay, so if there's no question, then thank you for joining the class today. Uh, and I will see you again on Wednesday. Okay? Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Alright, okay. Assalamualaikum and a very good day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.